Greetings, dear ones. It is Friday, September 3rd, and we are heading into a long holiday weekend here in the United States. And um, for many people, both here and around the world, this is a weekend of cleanup. Um, <clears throat> we had Hurricane Ida come through and land in the southern state of Louisiana and wreaking much havoc, but as it came up through the United States and finally to the East Coast, it was much more devastating than they had than had been anticipated. In my area, <coughs> excuse me, we did have tornadoes. Luckily, um, nothing in my immediate neighborhood, but to the south of me, there were multiple homes destroyed. And the flooding here is, I, I hesitate to use the word because I don't want it to be in misinterpreted, but awesome to behold. Um, in that it is just, mind-boggling that the streets of Philadelphia, the roadways, a major interstate, was not just merely flooded, but became a river itself. Um, there is an underground uh, um, expressway that leads from one end of the major highway down through the city and out again. And it's you know, pretty much a, a, a canal. And the water was almost up to the signs that indicate where the exits are and what, um, what the upcoming highways are to be able to choose from. So it was pretty um, unheard of. Um, and of course, the massive amount of damage by that flooding on individuals, on, you know, cars that were parked in the city, um, buildings in the city. It's going to be a long time to repair and um, reconstruct many of the things that we counted on and thought as very solid. And that's a great segue into what is going on on the planet in general. We continue to have massive fires in the West here in the United States. The Amazon, of course, is still burning. Um, Siberia is larger than all the other fires put together. Um, there is weather devastation all around the world and we can interpret that in a couple different ways. We can, some people see that as the reflection of our destructive tendencies over many, many years as far as affecting the climate, biodiversity, uh, pollution, etc. And certainly those have a direct effect. There is enough evidence in multi disciplines of multiple disciplines of science who gathered together less than a month ago and basically said we are in the red zone. If certain things are not changed within a very short period of time, um, there is no going back. Many even feel that, you know, we are past that tipping point. So what we thought was 50 years or more in the future, potential uh, no going back from points, <coughs> excuse me, those are coming in the next 10 to 20. And this goes in line with all that I've been speaking about for the past several years, that we are in a, an evolutionary process that is so intense because it is so accelerated. 
planets throughout the galaxy and the universe have gone through evolutionary processes um, even in a physical form. The difference with what is occurring here on this planet is the amount of evolutionary leap within such a short period of time. Which is why we're seeing this level of chaos, not just in the weather, but around the world. We are seeing it in um, protests and um, upheavals and governmental and political radicalism in, at both ends of the spectrum. And the responses from different groups and peoples around the world. And that's what is going to continue to happen. You're going to see a lot more of um, people rising up because that is the only way that this is going to change. Um, we're at a stage in our maturity as a species that we can no longer look to um, parents, bosses, corporations. You know, it used to be here, particularly in the United States, that once you were involved with a company, you kind of stayed in that company, whether you were rising up or changing positions, and then when you retire, you would have your pension, etc. So that is no longer the case. Things are moving and changing so radically in um, industries across the board that we can no longer look to that parental corporate entity for um, safety and security and um, sameness. And this upheaval and chaos is very, very purposeful. And it can feel horrific, particularly for sensitives and old souls. So it's absolutely vital that we find our own center. And we can do that in a wide variety of ways. And I'll get back to that in a few minutes. But um, this emotional maturity, this species maturity that we are heading for that has to transform and transmute the lower level aspects of human nature. And as we all know, change is not uh, always easy by any means, generally not. And we resist it in our personal lives, we resist it in um, society, we resist it as a species out of fear of what may happen when we don't have the same level of control over our environment and our um, lives. There are many uh, fears about it, but the emotional piece the, is the reflection of this flooding. I call it emotional flooding, which is leading to spiritual um, expansion or up-leveling. And there are many, many, many emotions flying around. What we would before perhaps be experiencing in a day, you'd have a mood, you'd have a state of mind or a particular feeling. Now they are changing moment to moment. And that constant shifting and moving and um, uh, uncertainty within those emotions makes it very, very difficult to relax into any change. So we have a lot of different factors involved in this upheaval, this chaos. We have amazing planetary 
alignments, configurations, certain planets coming forward. Um, I spoke a couple weeks ago about what was expected in August and it's continuing. We have um, still Uranus is creating just a depth of volatility and chaos and um, upheaval and uh, risings, uprisings. And we can see that in all of the volcanoes that have been um, going off around the world. And this upheaval is stirring up emotions within us, stirring up everything that we thought was fixed and consistent and yet those structures and those institutions and those um, mores of society and aspects of the past are in the process of deconstructing, <coughs> excuse me, to be reconstructed in a way that includes and um, allows for the expansion and development and um, transformation into a higher form and that is reflected individually what's reflected inside is also outside and there's it's not like we haven't seen the problems around the world and in societies and in governments for a very very long time but just like in our individual lives, we will put it off. We will um, tolerate, continue to tolerate more and more and more until such time as we are quote unquote forced to do something about it. Whether in our individual lives that means a grave illness, whether it means economic or financial ruin, or whether it means, you know, being forced out of a job either by the, you know, the company closing down or downsizing or what have you, but a radical difference in our uh, careers or work, or whether it's in a relationship that there is a divorce or um, something so um, blatant and so obvious that we can no longer continue in that way within that relationship. So it's causing emotional flooding and we know that water is the symbol for emotions. It is um, and it can be like a beautiful river flowing with currents and winding its way around and through beautiful landscape to arrive at um, the ocean eventually. And that can be our emotional experience. Probably not consistently unless we've done a great deal of inner transformation and transmutation but the flooding and the massive amount of water that comes with hurricanes this is a reflection of the emotional discord and the emotional churning that's going on in most people unless of course you have decided to just kind of opt out and many have because it is so overwhelming that we find different ways to distract ourselves or to numb ourselves or to um, 
create a story that goes along with what we're experiencing but doesn't but allows us to stay in sameness and limitation um, we are so intertwined and interdependent and interrelated with the earth that it's a constant back and forth reflection so what's going on in the earth not only with all of the storms and fires but internally the earth is uh, <laughs> firing up the core of the earth is getting hotter um, we have more and more solar flares uh, the geomagnetic storms that I spoke of last week are pretty apparent still now. You may notice that in your electronics being disruptive um, or disrupted, uh, your phones, things going strange and weird with all kinds of electronical equipment or electronic equipment. And so too are the electrical and electromagnetic fields within us disrupted by those solar flares and geomagnetic storms and the only thing protecting us from that massive amount of radiation as I spoke about last week is our atmosphere is our ozone so if we don't make some radical changes we are not going to have that level of protection because our emissions and so many other things are affecting or poking you know potentially poking holes through that and when those holes are large enough more and more radiation comes in more and more heat that can create more droughts more radical um, fires and just disrupt even more so our food supply um, I know that sounds like it's only bad news, it's only bad news, but that isn't actually the case. I'm pointing out that it isn't, we aren't victims of that. It isn't just happening to us. There isn't some puppeteer beyond this realm or beyond this plane, you know, creating pain and discomfort for us. We must as a species be in such radical discomfort that we are willing to make the really hard choices to willing to make those radical steps in to a new earth just like in our lives when we are pushed to the very edge we do make choices we must make choices we are forced to make choices so that's what's going on. And there are wondrous, wondrous, wondrous advances technologically. Um, physics is just daily coming with more evidence, particularly more evidence that we are the uh, creators with our consciousness that of this reality which means that we have the potential to actually change it you know it seems like and i've spoken about this before that in this third 3d reality that things are very um fixed they are very hard you know i'm knocking on the the desk the table that i have in front of me our bodies are not see-through and yet for those of you who are energy aware, you know that everything is energy. We're back to Albert Einstein. Everything is energy. And that energy that can be reformed and reformatted into something different. It is a very malleable reality a very uh, plastic reality and although that may not be evident 
when you come to have a deep level of transformation and transmutation in your own personal uh, psycho-spiritual being, you see how immediately the response around you, not just with people's attitudes because you seem different, but literally they stop doing many of the things that were causing pain or discomfort or anger in you previously. Um, your environment opens up. You have more fluidity in your choices, more freedom in your choices, whether that's in career or um, living arrangements. Time and time again, what we have feared, that change, and have come to make a deep change within, creates a, it, it decreases the fear of change. So often with clients, you know, once they've broken through some of their defense system uh, tools and abilities and skills and mechanisms and have a breakthrough, there is no longer the child's fear of going in and feeling that emotion. And that's where we are right now as a planet. There is fear of looking inside and really assessing or discovering and assessing what we feel about a wide range of subjects. And fortunately, as I've been, again, speaking about for nearly two years at this point, the pandemic has been a beautiful opportunity for the world to slow down and even stop giving us the space and the time and the opportunity to really look at our lives individually and collectively. And when things started to open up so rapidly and everybody went was heading back for normal, we were going at it again back to a pace at which things are very difficult to see when you're moving fast. They're very, very difficult to feel when you're moving fast. So there is this constant slowdown that we're going to probably continue to be experiencing. And that causes great disruption in supply. But until and unless we actually look at supply and where it's coming from, how we are harvesting natural resources and food, how we are um, perhaps even abusively utilizing labor or uh, certain e economies, countries' economies as um, taking advantage of. I came across this morning some magnificent photos of Afghanistan and the landscape and the people of Afghanistan. I will try to post them on the Applied Universal Alchemy group so that you can see them. And, you know, that is a country that has been utilized by <laughs> several different superpowers over the years over the decades, and it isn't just the people who suffer, the land also suffers. And yet at the same time, it has enabled much of the landscape of the country to be preserved rather than um, abused. 
there's a lot of wide open spaces, magnificent uh, mountainous areas. Everything is there. It's a, it's a fascinating um, environment of land and nature. So to bring this in a little bit, this is a creative chaos. We have the planet Eris, E-R-I-S, very, very prominent the past month or so. And she is named the goddess of chaos. And again, that chaos is called for in order to recreate, whether it's our individual lives or our planetary lives, our collective lives. And while it feels horrific in the moment and in the interim, we each have the opportunity to create the world, our individual little worlds and the greater world in a wholly new way. And again, we have planets this month that are standouts for equality and um, freedom for all, um, as well as, you know, Mercury is very apparent there and it always will be um, in some form or another throughout this massive evolution because it is such a catalyst. And Mercury is also very much about the mind and our thoughts and more and more evidence is coming forth that it is our thoughts, it is our consciousness that creates our experience individually and collectively. So we have a new moon coming as well and that's on the 6th. And as always, I um, remind everyone to do their abundance checks, which is taking a blank check and writing it out to yourself. And in the area where you would put the numeral of the amount, you put paid, you write paid in full on the line where you would write out in words the amount, um, you would write out the amount desired with, you know, and how you do the, the uh, sense, this would be no slash doubt. And it is signed by the law of abundance. And the new moon is always a wonderful time to plant new seeds and to set out what you want to be created. And right now we're very much in a time of practical manifestation, meaning it can, you can lay out specific things in your life. I would like to earn such and such an amount per month or per year. Um, I would, you know, I'm deciding or I desire to create a new home that has whatever features you'd like in it. And in this, there is a knowing when you're writing out your manifestations to then constantly focus on them with your thoughts, knowing that it is going into a medium, whether you refer to it as spiritual law, which I've spoken about so much, or whether you are looking at it as energy that can be converted from one thing to another, or, um, the 
plasma web that is being viewed as the potential for creation in physics and we'll talk about that another day but we are on we are in process of creating a new earth and it may not look like it but we must each and every one design what we want the world to be and knowing that when that design is coming from a deep place not only from your heart but from your inner knowing from your inner desires then rest assured that that is going to coordinate with all the other views and visions of a new earth of a new way and that's where the quantum comes in a quantum force allows for if you can imagine you know thousands and hundreds of thousands millions of different threads and somehow they all weave together to create a reality that works for everyone it is possible we don't have to all wish for the same things although some of the basics would certainly be the foundation or foundational to those visions of the new earth clean air clean water clean food um, freedom the ability to follow your creative uh, expression to its fullest and the details the details are not our job actually how it comes to pass I have so many clients that you know they know where they want to go and they know where they are now and they're like I don't know how to get there and that's not I keep telling them that's not your job when you are when we're doing work and you have access to internal wisdom and divine wisdom through your helpers and you know in the process that I've created to work with clients it's the process itself the how doesn't matter we always want the how through the ability to control things through our mind your job alone is to make the wish so to speak for we are in that's one of the influences right now it's one of the energetics available is particular forms of magic and magic is not something uh, supernatural or uh, beyond our capability it is simply a way of creation that happens at a very very fast pace and has far-reaching effects so there's a wonderful line I've mentioned many times before from the movie Thor where he's speaking to his future girlfriend who is a physicist and he says you know you in your past called it magic now you call it science I come from a place where they are one in the same so we are just on the edge of a level of technological and um, awareness of our power consciously of our of utilizing our consciousness to be able to literally change this reality so I'm going to invite you on the new moon on the 6th to really write out or utilize clay to form an abstract of how you want to feel and put in concrete practical form somehow some way what it is you want to manifest 
And with that always is the opportunity for cleansing and clearing because you have to make space for the new. You know, I have many, many, you can see many, many things in this room that I utilize when called for with clients at their particular portals or energetics here. But if I were to bring anything in more, I would have to remove some things, say on a particular wall. And that's what we need to do within ourselves and within our environment, within our homes. So it's a great opportunity to cleanse and clear and declutter and make new space or make more space for ourselves internally and externally. So you might consider um, a cleansing program. Um, I'm very fond of the lemonade cleanse that you can find. Um, uh, I have the book over there. I'll post it here. Um, it was developed by Stanley Burroughs many, many years ago. He is long past, but um, even to do so for a day or a couple few days, it's a combination of distilled water, organic lemons, um, dark uh, maple syrup, and cayenne pepper. And it's a wonderful cleanse to do. It feels fabulous. Um, if you're doing it for any length of time, the first few days, I would suggest that you give yourself space and time to rest and um, be quiet, get lots of sleep. But thereafter, if you were to continue it for a week or two, the hunger goes away and you are fully energized and um, just keep drinking that throughout the day whenever you feel any hunger and the mind gets clearer, your ability to, um, you know, your, your um, activity level increases, your energy increases. It's a wonderful way, but find yours, you know, find your way of cleansing. But I would, you know, in the old days it was, and now coming back again, fasting. Um, I find that a bit challenging to only drink water for the day or days. But if that's what works for you, then please, you know, choose your best method. So with that new moon, we're creating this new way for ourselves, the new earth, taking opportunity to really write things down. And we're gonna take a little bit at this point and really drop into the energetics of creative chaos, that things are moving and shaking and breaking apart so that they can be reconstructed, deconstructing old institutions and old thought processes and old ways of being that are really unsustainable and they're very much dead ends and we see that in our own lives. And I'm going to, in this container, is all of this movement and um, churning, but we're going to bring in an energetic of still point. And so many people right now have even more difficulty meditating. And those that have worked with me know that I don't generally use that term because it has so much around it and, you know, so many beliefs about what it should be, what it shouldn't be, and people, you know, criticizing themselves and condemning themselves because they don't do it right or they don't do it enough. And I just encourage my clients to create space for still time. And what that generally means is sitting or um, I would encourage you to do so sitting rather than laying down, particularly as you begin to carve out that quiet time space or still time. Because it is really, really important to include the body. 
And when you're sitting, that's why when we do our deep dive in a minute, it's really important to get in your body and finding those sits bones, letting those shoulder blades just kind of slide down and together so that your, your um, bone structure, the framework for your body can do the work and you can just sink down and into your internal world, your inner universe or innerverse as I call it. And just sit, you know, um, a lot of people find mantra music to be very, very helpful because it kind of creates a rhythm and particular mantras, uh, particular chanting also has a technology within it to create an energetic frequency around you and as a key to open up certain aspects within you. Some of my favorite is um, I listen to Tibetan monks chanting uh, Deva Pramal, that's D-E-V-A-P-R-E-M-A-L. We used um, one of her chants last week. I think it was last week. Uh, Sanatam Kaur is another of my favorites. S-N-A-T-U-M, uh, capital K-A-U-R. Beautiful and very accessible, all of them. But again, find your own. I actually use a wide variety. Uh, Gregorian monks, um, beautiful uh, Sanskrit chants, whatever works for you. Please, you know, kind of taste, taste around um, what feels good to you. And that may change because we are just in this <laughs> rapid change moment to moment. You know, you may like to listen to something one day and the next day it will be something completely different. Sometimes it's nature sounds. Sometimes it's just absolute silence. They are means to bring you to that silence. All to bring you to your internal world. Trying to quiet the mind is a very difficult task and it usually entails a level of control. And to me, that is the opposite of what the connection internally and with the divine is about. You want to allow. That's why so often when we're, you hear me when we're doing deep dives, say allow, allow, allow. And allow is can be a very, very challenging thing. But when you allow, then comes the internal wisdom and the discernment allowing for a stillness within the chaos, a centering. And along with all that I've mentioned today, assisting us, the planets, the earth, um, beings that are kind of overseeing this process with us. Many of you know that uh, one of my teams is a council, an intergalactic council called the Ancients. There are a lot of beings in on this process. We are not doing this alone. And on the earth, right at this time, there is huge mountain energy coming through to assist us not just because of the solidity of the mountains. There are many, many, many different flavors and qualities that mountains bring. But in particular, it has been high peaked mountains. It's the very peak of the mountain. And I think that has a lot to do with the ability to rise above and see things from this wider perspective, to realize that there is much more going on here than simply suffering and um, chaotic overwhelm. And as I mentioned, also there are certain flavors of magic allowing for rapid and 
widespread change. Um, we also have the wind. The wind is so very prominent and powerful. We had the tornadoes here. We have hurricane winds. We have the winds blowing and fanning the fires in many places. And that wind energy can also be, everything has a positive and a negative or a constructive and a destructive form. And we are certainly, or we have certainly experienced the more destructive form of wind recently, but it, it indicates the winds of change, the massive, forceful, powerful, sweeping winds of change that are here and helping us. From the animal kingdom, we have the butterfly. And that is always a symbol. And I'm going to begin the container space for our deep dive. The sacred geometrics have been in process forming for the last couple days. Certainly this morning, stronger still, creating a container of safety and security and stillness within which you are a an integral part in a very particular location within that sacred geometric configuration that will allow for your optimal reception and optimal transmission to others within this container, in the physical plane, those that are listening currently, those that will be listening at some other point in time, as well as the beings that have joined in this container, those that you bring with you, those that have stepped forward for and on behalf of the current process of evolution in this particular moment with their expertise. We have the powerful element of wind. Various mountain peaks around the world. particular flavors of magic. And just allow yourself to kind of settle down and in your body on the chair, the couch, the floor, whatever you may be sitting on. Just becoming gently aware of your body how much you are feeling your body. Just let a very, very gentle scan come down and over and around you, by you, noticing where you feel kind of maybe a blank spot or Oh, I can feel part of my back against the chair, but I can't actually feel the middle or the lower part. I'm aware of my thighs against the chair, but not necessarily my upper thighs. 
This is an amazing vehicle which enables you to have such a wide range and variety of experiences internally and externally. And when and as you allow yourself to drop down and inside this amazing vehicle to access and feel your inner being, your internal world, energetically, spiritually. Your very soul resides within. There are structures through your energy field bringing you information from your very soul. And it's purposeful design. that you are living out here and now in this dimension. For you to be here at this point in time with this radical evolutionary leap You are a great soul indeed. You very well may be an old soul, meaning that you have explored this universe And perhaps even so many times having existences on this planet, you are now an expert. For you have experienced it from many perspectives. As a human, perhaps as many different animals, plant and insect, you are free to choose. And the more you have experienced, the more you know. the more you longed to be a vital and significant player in this process. yourself to drink in and receive the vastness of you. the depth and breadth and width 
of your soul's experience. All carried within you. All part of the you that is here and now. We so often forget when we get caught up in the third dimensional details. <clears throat> You are being called to remember to remember who you are to remember this expansiveness of eons of experience to sink down and into that wisdom, that profound knowledge. The exquisite free will to forget in this physical plane with so much to encounter and so much to deal with. As you truly are beyond this physical experience, the more you are able to sit on that mountain peak view, viewing. your life. That of this planet. as 
as you explore and transform the human emotional experience. More ability to cooperate and collaborate with your wider self. And your many non-physical colleagues and teammates. is here. Everything you may need or desire is available and accessible. field and that wider self, your soul self, to sink you down and in another level. So that you may feel this breadth and depth and width of you. For within that remembrance of your eternality, there is no fear. You are an infinite being. And in this there is stillness
calm, serenity. utter security for there is nothing to harm you Your soul cannot be harmed. Andrea has often cited a scene from a movie The Pirates of the Caribbean third where the ship is being blown up and a man is walking down the stairs and nothing's touching him He is utterly unaffected by what is going on around him. We invite you to seek out this image on film to allow you to take in that sense of Untouchability. As you move through the constant fluctuations and forces of change. Drink deeply once again of this utter serenity, complete calm, Peace-centeredness. Mm -hmm. 
knowing that it is available and accessible at a given moment. For it is you within you. Once again, I invite you to allow your energy field, your wider self, to lead you, guide you, from a place of internal back to the external hopefully with less separation less division less here and there The more you keep going back in, the easier it is to be in and out at the same time. Not having to reserve that for only still time. There is much more to come. I find that doing things <laughs> on a weekly basis is not um, beneficial for me or those around. So I'm going to be doing little lives more frequently. Also on September 25th, <coughs> excuse me, I am conducting an all-day transformative workshop. It will still be virtual. There is a small possibility that there will be a bit of hybrid, but I sincerely doubt it. I'm conducting it virtually. So it's going from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And I will have more information on Healer's Universe page, Applied Universal Alchemy will be kind of the place to go for notices. So I encourage you to become a member if you are not. So eventually it's moving all over into that group. Um, some of the oils that I would recommend, those of you who know me know that for 21 years I've worked with therapeutic grade essential oils, particularly and only Young Living. And I would encourage you to um, please contact me if you'd like to have direct information and be able to receive them um, at a wholesale price. But I would recommend Harmony, um, there's a roll-on form called Tranquil, which has several different oils in it. And for me, it should be named Serenity. <laughs> so that's another great oil to use right now. Um, Cystus, Cystus is a very, very ancient oil. It's been one of the first 
oils processed thousands of years ago and it's wonderful to awaken your own um, psychic abilities uh, I would also recommend Jasmine to help you find that sweet spot within and if any others come I will mention them um, on I will post about them in the Applied Universal Alchemy group. So for now, um, I really invite you, I know this is a holiday weekend and everybody's going and moving and having fun, but if you can also take some time for quiet and particularly on Monday to write out how you want your personal world to be and how you want the world to be because it's a great time for anchoring in those manifestations and again don't forget your abundance check please contact me if you have any questions or have any you know reactions from um, the process we did today and please comment or pose your questions so that it's always beneficial for others to see a question and or a response and you know so many have intuitive information that can assist so please comment and, and post below this video so that you can receive and in your questioning you can give so, as always, it is with the deepest of honor, gratitude, and love for you on this planet at this time. Until next time, bye-bye.